Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I am your host, Christopher Brown. Last month, we ventured to Brandon, Manitoba, amidst the buzz of the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference. Now, amidst the vibrant energy of the event, we seized the opportunity to engage with local leaders hailing from across the province. Now, today, we are delving into the pressing issues confronting municipalities firsthand, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders, and offering insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governments in the province. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Reeve Ivan Norman Dew from the rural municipality of La Baroque. In the heart of every thriving community lies a well-crafted strategic plan. But crafting such a plan requires expertise, experience, and a deep understanding of local needs. Enter Strategic Steps, your partner in municipal strategic planning. Strategic Steps team of experts have years of experience in municipal administration. At Strategic Steps, they just don't develop plans. They co-create homegrown strategies tailored to your unique community. They listen, they collaborate, they empower your community to thrive. Contact Strategic Steps today and take the first step towards a brighter future for your municipality. Call Strategic Steps at 780-416-9255 or visit strategicsteps.ca to get started. Ivan, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by asking the state of the association of, I want to make sure I get this right here, the Association of Bilingual Municipalities of Manitoba or Manitoba Municipality? Yeah, it's, it's in French, it's l'Association des Municipalités Bilingues du Manitoba. So it's the Association of Manitoba Bilingual Municipalities. Okay, so, so the state of, the, the current state of municipalities in, in your association is what would you say? The current state is very good. We're, we're all healthy bilingual municipalities. Um, we're part of AMM also as part of the AMBM, but we're, we just fight for advocacy for our, our French languages around, around the municipalities. So all 15 municipalities are, are considered bilingual, so we have bilingual staff at, at the RM office and also usually a bilingual on, on council also. In our municipality in La Brokery, per se, uh, of the seven councillors, including me, we're four people that are bilingual. So, um, yeah, that's usually the way it is on, on majority of councils. So that's what we just fight for, for, um, for French services in, in, in both official languages. So do you mind me asking, it seems, and this is just from an outsider's perspective, from someone from Calgary who's covered municipal politics, not only in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, but bilingualism in the Western Canada isn't as alive as it would be potentially in Eastern Ontario or even Quebec. Are you seeing a resurgence of bilingualism in Manitoba? Yeah, yes, I, I would have to say yes, just because of the fact that if you look at uh, um, the DSFM, which is their French school division in Manitoba, um, we have a French school now in Brandon, which we've never had before. So a lot of different schools are, are popping up, and, and I, I think if I speak on behalf of the, of the education system, a lot of people are going into the, the um, uh, not just French, but also the, uh, what do we call this again, sorry, the... Uh, Catholic? No, not Catholic. Sorry, I'm. I'm just trying to think of the word here, because uh, there's French, English, and there's immersion. And oh, the immersion okay. and French immersion is becoming very, very popular. So yes, I, 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 I think the the, the French language is getting stronger. Um, it's not evident, but it, it, I think there is there is possibilities out there for sure. So what do you credit that to, if you don't mind me asking? Because, and I know I'm asking a bilingual question to the Reeve of the organization, the president of the organization, yep. but you must see and sort of hope that there's a ways forward to increase or continue this increase of immersion slash bilingualism in, the, in your municipality. So it's not just 15 in yep. five years, maybe it's 20. Exactly. In and and I, I believe it's, it's not just the French languages, it's like people are starting to be multilingual, yeah. meaning like um, it could be Spanish or it could be German or it could be Russian. But I, I just find that, that people are, are exploring their options and French is probably the easiest one to, to go because people can go to school and, and have French. And then also there's also a lot of multi-families that, that an English person will marry a French person. The next thing you know, they want to go into immersion or French, right? So 
I think it's expanding all over the place. So you have 15 members, and I was looking on your website prior to the interview because I quickly did research just to try to figure out where your municipalities lie. But they're across the province of Manitoba. There are, there's not a lot in the western region, which no. we are currently, but in the sort of the interlakes area, plus in the northern area, you're seeing a lot of uh, uh, municipalities there. Yeah. Before I ask the stupid question, I'm going to ask the important question. Um, is this a growing population that you're seeing, or is this is it, has it been 15 for five years, 10 years, 20 years? It's or? actually been 15, and now we're expanding for four other uh, RMs. So we'll be 19, to be honest. So it's expanding in the southeast, obviously, because southeast is, is where the majority of, of French... Is, is going on, um, but out west also. Like, yeah. So we're, we're expanding out there, but it's still majority of, of our of our membership is from the southeast region. Okay, so now the stupid question. Okay. <laughs> I'm assuming I'm going to ex- hear the exact same thing that I hear here when I speak to all municipal leaders from across Manitoba, but what is the biggest issue facing your m- member municipalities today? Our biggest issue, to be honest, like, because of it's a, it's, a, it's a very distinct board, our biggest issue is, is finding, obviously, enough funding to get all of the, the French bilingual services to everyone around and also expanding it so that everybody in, in our municipalities can, can have French services. Like, we, you want to have, you want to go to the local store and have a French service delivery, right? So, um, I think it's, it's, it's education and also, obviously, like everybody else, it's, it's getting new funding. So, let's talk about funding for a second because unless the federal and provincial government comes to the table with extra funding, your municipalities have to sort of rely on, your organization has to sort of sort of spearhead some of that funding initiatives for the member communities. How do you see yourself working with all municipal municipalities, the 15 or 19 now, to address some of those funding shortfalls that we are seeing potentially? Yeah, we don't, to be honest, we're... we're we have a good, very stable funding from the from the federal government. So we have a lot of uh, stable funding coming in, and majority of the of the rest of our funding comes from project driven. Okay. So we don't we don't get the funding un- unless a project gets approved. So so we we're, we we have a small staff. We're only five people, or not even five. I think four or five on the IMBM. So it's not a big staff. So that as long as we have our core funding, which is we all, we've had the core funding for many years, um, I, I think we can keep on prospering and, and move forward. So I want to talk about some infrastructure issues, if you don't mind. And I know this is not around bilingualism, but I think it's another issue that a lot of municipalities are facing. Um, For yourself, as president of your organization, are you seeing infrastructure being one of the big issues that your member communities are being sort of uh, pressed with? For sure. Like all all rural municipalities, like like La Brokery, um, roads and drainage is one of the biggest issues. And and, and we, we have like... For instance, in the brokery itself, my RM, well, we have 160 miles of road to take care of. People don't realize how big, of uh, how many miles we have to take care of, and and if we and majority when we need to fix the road, it comes from our budget, not from the province or the feds. So we we always need to keep lobbying, just like AMM does, which should do a great job for us. Is we need to keep lobbying the the, the feds and the province to help us fix these roads because. These roads are, are, especially now, the pop, everybody's, in the southeast, I find everybody's growing. So there's more traffic on the roads. There's more cars going on there. So when you have more traffic, obviously, you need more, more infrastructure and more help. I am going to ask a political question now sure. on top of that, because we're recording this a few days after the uh, provincial budget tabled their the, the provincial government tabled the provincial budget. In it, there were some nuggets for municipalities across the province. For yourself, did you see anything in there that would help address some of these infrastructure uh, deficits that your min- member municipalities are dealing with? I, I, I guess yes and no. <laughs> like, I, I know it's a, it's a political <laughs> yeah. answer, yes and no. Um, there is obviously more f- good funding and and we're very grateful of the NDP government this year for for doing what they're doing but there's there's also the federal government that needs to step up because we we need the gas tax to to stay there so that we can we can focus on funding for our municipalities and focus on our roads and our drainage for our municipalities last question for you because I know you're a busy man and you got a few breakout sessions that you probably want to attend uh, today but what's the future like for the membership of the association in your opinion do you see a vibrant future ahead of you or do you see some challenging years sort of over the next few years for, for our 
we'll say now I'm talking on on uh, as president. Yeah, I think I think the um, the membership. I believe it will keep on growing. We, we, we've had some, like we'll say, initial discussions, even with the city of Brandon, the joining our membership, which which I think will keep on growing. And and I think they're looking at a, you know, a French school up in Thompson. So that could be another one that they could join us, right? So I, I think the, the French language will, will keep on expanding. Um, as long as the schools keep on <laughs> growing and the immersion keeps on growing, I think it will keep on expanding. <laughs> I said that was the last question, but no you, you said something that I want to make sure I understand. So that way, if I don't understand, my listeners probably don't understand. How does one become a member? Is it just you have a school and that's it? Because it seems like no, that was... No, you have to... Like the, the council itself. Yeah. Obviously, it's all council driven. The council itself has to designate himself bilingual. Okay. And to be bilingual, you must have an employee or even a person on council that are bilingual to, to be, become member. Okay. All right, and then and then if if you do have that, then you as long as the council designates himself a bilingual municipality, you can become a member. Oh wow! Okay, so is there benefits of the association? Is there training that comes along with it? And I know you've just opened up a range of questions that I need to get. On the table. <laughs> Fine. Um, there's benefits for sure because we 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 have uh, funding for like translation. Every every we because as a as a member I'm a membership as a bilingual community I'm assuming all bylaws all policies all procedures all have to be in both official languages sure. if you're a, a member of the association yeah. and, and we are are like in the brokery we can say that they just send our minutes to to the AMBM and yeah. then we do all the translation oh. so then it, it becomes in French so all that's paid for so just and our membership is not a big amount is it if I'm pretty sure it's six fifty a, a year, so it's not a big amount that you have to pay. But you have a lot of services that that will benefit your 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 um, your municipality, and also you have a lot of, of uh, we have special programs all the time that's come that are rolling out that are great that people can take care of. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, I feel like I've taken up more time than I anticipated, but I do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. Uh, I, I, I knew about your organization prior to this, and I'm so glad that I was able to connect with you. So that way, if there's any issues that come up, I'm able to connect with you, For and sure. we can have these uh, ongoing conversations about the state of uh, any, anytime, anytime awesome. you want an interview. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA convention in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of the top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.